Time for my topic. Co-presidents. Um, no, yes. we're not doing. There's co-presidents. Is about co-presidents? No, is that a thing? That is that legal? Uh, before we go any further, we just did a whole topic about Patreon. We of course want to thank everybody who supported us in January. Here are your names running through. If you did your uh, support there, if you hit the tier on Patreon to support us. patreoncom slash funny. Thank you so much for your support. See, there's your name. Send a screen cap to your mom. Be like, this is what I do with my money. Put Fuck it on your you. You should, <laughs> well, you should be investing in a 401k instead. No, don't do that. Um. My topic is simple. I'm dying. I am so fucking tired right now. I did the I did the live stream for The Walking Dead, which meant that Monday I woke up, got ready for Colin O'Gag Live. I woke up probably, I don't know what, 8.30, 9. Mm-hmm. What time did I roll out of bed? I have no idea. Kiss you on the cheek and come to work. No? Okay. Anyways. Spoon me for just a few sexy. more waning sexy, minutes. Sexy, sexy. 8.39, I wake up, get ready, start going to Colin O'Gag Live. 12.30, I start uh, the Walking Dead live stream, and then I went for... 19 hours. That's right. That's what I said that's earlier. That's what you said. Yeah. yeah 19 18, hours 18 to, and some to 7.30. You don't have to be all like, No, no. It was oh, 7.30. God. We ended right around there. Okay. And then went to bed for three hours, woke up to Colin and Greg Live again, mm-hmm. and then I've just been running on coffee since then. And that's why I had a Coke today. A little bit of sugar here in the afternoon to keep me going. Because we did two unboxings. Then we did that. Packed up a bunch of shit in here. Did yeah. all sorts of stuff. So I'm dying. I'm very tired. I'm wondering how much I got to beat the order tonight for sure. I have a whole checklist of things I need to do on top of that. Nick needs to make me this graphic that was running. So we yeah, need to make sure I, I just, get Yeah, we'll get that. Get uh, that but my question is, I want to talk about sleep deprivation and stories related to it in your own lives. Because mm-hmm. like right now, this isn't bad. I've been, I've been more tired than this. I've, run, I've done more on less sleep than this. Mm-hmm. But I am hurting. And it, it harkens back to dumb things I've done where I stayed up too late. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is really interesting to me. Obviously, we all have stories. We'll get to those. Mm -hmm. But what's so interesting is the fact that you don't seem that bad right now. Yeah. Because knowing you and knowing how you handle things and knowing how things can get for you, when you get stressed, you can get pretty damn stressed. Yeah. You have not gotten stressed at all today. You've been super fine. Like, you just went with it. And, like, you don't seem tired. You're not, like, fucking up what you're saying and shit. And that's crazy. In my head, I feel like I am. You're not. No, you're not. I wouldn't even know that you. The other thing for me is like you know how fast I talk generally. Mm -hmm. When I feel like I'm like in the beginning of intros, I noticed when I was like the seducer slash producer Nick Scarpino. Like granted, that's just normal person pronunciation. Mm -hmm. But for Greg Miller, that felt like it was taking way too long. No, no. And I think I watch videos of myself where I think I'm fucking things up. Like there's been plenty of times where uh, in interviews it'll be like. As I live and breathe, and I'm like, "What's this person's name?" And I think it's a pregnant pause, and I'm fucking up, and then it kicks in, and I go. But like, you watch the tape back, and it's just like, "No, that's probably how normal brains function." Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just not used to working on that level. I'm usually down here, where right. I think if I just run really fast through the Sonic method, yeah, everything Sonic. will be okay in the end. I think the thing I know, I know about Greg after knowing him for so long and working alongside him for so long is he only gets really stressed out and frustrated. When when it's least opportune? No, that's I mean that's all of us, right? <laughs> None, there's there's never a great opportunity for when you're like now is the time for me to lose my shit if ever there was one. And great, not that Greg ever loses his shit I per do. se. Yeah, a little bit here. We all never, do. Never really, never really, a hundred percent. I've never lost my shit here. I want to put that out there for the day that I do. We can make a big deal out of that it. That sounds good. Well, after it's done, at the time when you're losing your shit, no, no one wants to hear. Oh, you're too fun losing his shit. No. Um. Oh, I've lost my shit here. Uh. But I think I've seen Greg, and this is the key I think to to you sort of keeping a constant pace is that you pack way too much on your shoulders on a daily basis. But I think the re- you, a you like it, and b I think the thing that keeps you sane is that when you schedule it out and you have a plan, no matter how much the content is, you just kind of look forward until you have that break and you're like, okay, I'm good. I've noticed that when you get frustrated is when there's Something a, happens a little hiccup in yeah. that plan. Yeah, yeah. And it throws off all of that planning you've done for the next, like, hour or two or three or week or whatever. And you're like, shit, now I have to go back and redo all that. Because you run on this, like, freight train mentality that's going forward. And if sure. there, if that train has to stop, it throws off the schedule for everything and it pisses you off. The business has been eye-opening since we've launched on our own. And yeah. I, I, I'll tell you, like, nine times out of ten, I open emails now with, hey, sorry, I used to be better at emails than this. Yeah, because now emails sit there and chill for like two weeks. Just it's just like yeah, we're at that point. I was describing it to Colin's girlfriend Cheryl the other day on a, on a walk home from a pizza restaurant while Colin was running ahead to poop his pants. That I'm sitting there in front of the goal oh, and I'm the goalie ass. and I used to be so good at stopping every ball or puck that came by and now motherfuckers are just flying by me and I'm just like I'm doing the best I can yeah. this is the best I can do you know what I mean there's just a shrug of shoulders and that's yeah, what it is but I mean that's just- so today is like totally one of those acceptance days of just like it's not gonna be what I want it to be like I didn't have these f- things but what am I gonna do I'm not gonna yeah. freak out I mean that. I think there's two mentalities for that right we can try to do everything but I think history will teach us that that's just a, a good 
recipe for failure. Or you can prioritize, and that's what you have to do in business, yeah. right? And we yeah. prioritize, I think, fairly well as a group. I think we talk, we sit there, we have an honest discussion of what we should be doing, and we let everything else fall by the wayside, and that's just what's going to have to happen sometimes. Yeah. Um, we put out a ton of content. We really do. And and that it's it looked like not so much when we were planning it, when we were sitting there on that, on that one weekend when we were like, okay, let's do our production schedule and see yeah. what's going to happen. Um, and Colin has brought this up multiple times. He's like, I don't understand why we can't just get it to a place where we shoot – like two to three days a week and the rest of the, the rest of it's just free not necessarily free time but time to do the administrative stuff and the planning and all that stuff and that's the right mentality but then it's all it's almost like you still have to give something up to make that plan to do that yeah um and that's it's hard it's not easy i mean yeah. and there's no roadmap there's no one sitting there there's no there's not a ceo of this company going ah you messed up guys go back and do it again it's like oh we screwed something up and we didn't get the patreon video up and now people are like not pissed but they're not happy and that's our business, and we got to make sure people are happy, and we got to make so sure. So we cut Vimeo out of the equation. Yeah, Fuck Vimeo, them. man. They, they were fucking up, huh? The the uh, and so the market spoke. Uh, I think that when we traded our jobs in at IGN, when we weren't administratively responsible for the company, that there was a level of predictability there. So, like, I used to go in. I used. I had a. I had a cycle, like a system, every day when yep. I go to IGN. I'd get there. I was most productive in the morning. Yeah. And I would get there, and I would answer all my emails. In fact, like. PR people, I think, especially were astonished how quickly I answered emails. Because I was like, the faster I can get through these emails, I can just get them off my plate and then I can play this game or review this right. game or do whatever I have to do. And now I look at my inbox, which is not nearly as full, but because we have so many other things to do and I'm like, you know, for, for me or whatever, I'm like trying to deal with the social media and just do, talking to people and making sure people are happy and, and like learning a lot about the audience, which I think is somewhat relevant, which we just saw in our yeah. last um and our last uh, topic, somewhat relevant to, to the success of this company, is how they're doing whatever. So I try to answer every tweet, and I, I have like Facebook message, like go back and forth with people, and all these kinds of things. And then I look at the clock, and I'm like, "Fuck!" Like, what I realize is that yeah, where did today go? By the way, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. well, that's what I realize that is that like it's just for me, like because what I'm doing is writing all day, still not creatively or whatever, mm-hmm. but like writing all day. I'm writing tweets. I'm reading tweets. I'm writing emails to fans and Facebook messages and posts and all these kinds of things i'm like i look at my email inbox and i'm like fuck like i don't want to answer any of these emails right now yep. and then i have these gusts of energy that come out of nowhere for an hour at like at midnight because i do a lot of random ass work at night right greg will tell you like i just sit there at night and i'm just like doing random shit and i'll just brrr, like answer all the emails mm-hmm. and then another week will and i always answer mine i'm sorry for the delay in getting back to you that's like how every one of my emails starts now and then i just and then it and then all the emails are done the inbox is clear and then it slowly stacks up and i just don't have the propensity right now to get like to, to, to nip it in the butt as I used to with IGM because there's just all this other shit that has to be dealt with you know what I mean like it's just not the way it used to be yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want it to be the way it used to be because we weren't happy but right. like the I'm happier now but feeling overwhelmed sometimes as well and I said this before and I'll say it again to all the social media managers out there and all the people that deal with Twitter and Facebook or whatever newfound and infinite respect for what you do because <laughs> it is I really used to look at like social media stuff and be like it's a job and it needs to be done. You need to interact. How hard can it possibly be? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the fact is, is it is fucking ultimately and infinitely time consuming, you know? Yeah. And to do it right, to do, to it, do right. it right. And I think we are doing it right. And, and I think we're doing it beyond right because <coughs> Bless you. The, I'll go, I try to go on to Twitter every eight hours or so and I'll go and I'll answer every tweet, you know? And like, that's the way I think Twitter is meant to be used or whatever, mm-hmm. but man, it takes time, but it makes you, it makes the audience out there because they are so valuable. It's feel valuable. It's not just me saying you're valuable. It's me giving you the time, but man, it's just a complicated rigmarole, you know, out there. It's right a now. rigmarole. Mm-hmm. Rigmarole. Um, yeah, but I mean, to, to kind of backtrack to the original, to your topic, Greg, I mean, this is, this is how I feel like the first month I think was a little harder than this month. It's been a little bit easier. Yeah. Now we have well, to Well, now it's just, again, I'm just like, whatever, it's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. We have to, I mean, we have to fulfill a lot of the goals on Patreon, which you're actively doing, um, which is great. And that's a good problem to have. Um, but I felt there was a, there was a period there where I couldn't like I think I would hit like Saturday and just sleep all day, mm-hmm. and that was like that was pretty brutal. But as far as ultimate sleep deprivation goes, there's one period in my life that I specifically there's two periods actually that I really really remember, and a lot of people who have worked on uh, like done a professional shoot that goes longer than one day will will tell you about this. God. We did um, we did when we were doing not as another zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> fucking shit. we we were which is a web series we did at IGN and it was a sponsored web series. And a lot of the way these sponsorships go are, you know, they go, Hey, we want to partner with you guys. We've got a certain amount of budget and a certain amount of time. And what do you guys have? And we go, okay, we want to do this cool idea and it's going to be this and it's going to be that. And they go, cool. Then you don't hear anything from them for a while. And then 
like a week before the first episodes do they go cool go for it and so you have a week to mobilize it and in this particular instance we were we were fortunate enough to ca- partner up with capcom and they give us a decent lead time but they they what they wanted was fairly aggressive they wanted a 15 minute piece of narrative they wanted it broken up into three episodes and they wanted it to be reminiscent of the resident evil series to to um get you know promote brand awareness of resident evil because i think the was it was remasters or was it, no, four? it, it was, was uh, revelation revelations that's what it was excuse me not four One. um so yeah, they were like, "We need you to do this, and it needs to be 15 minutes long." Now, 15 minutes in standard script writing format is means you're writing about 15 pages of narrative, which means you have enough space in there to do a complete story with a little bit of character development, which we chose not to do per se. Are you kidding me? We, we had character. It was growth. Well, we had Alfredo we, grew. Alfredo yeah. did grow, but for the most part, it was it was pure shenanigans. Um, but what that meant was we only had really budget and time because we had to start doing posts on it. Uh, immediately basically was that we only could really shoot for three days and I only had budget for three days so we had to do five pages a day and anyone who does any shoots will tell you that that's kind of that's a recipe for disaster if you're asking for five pages at most you can shoot two to three pages a day of narrative unless you have a really really big crew or big production crew and most of it's dialogue we had I had a decent sized one um, but not not nearly as big as I would have, not nearly as much prep time, nor do you ever have any enough prep time yeah, for any exactly. project you ever do. You can always use more. You can always use more posts. You can always use more money. Um, so the first day we went four hours over, and it was a night shoot. So we went till about, God, I think it was five or six in the morning on the Jesus. roof of IGN. Yeah. Um, barely finished the last shot before the sun started coming up, and then I had to break my crew. And we're not a union shoot, but I try to adhere to union rules, which means you have to give from the time the last person gets home eight hours in order to allow them time to sleep and come back to work. So I had to push the next day's shoot, which pushed that back. So by about the third day, you were just de- dealing with delirium. And you're tired, and you got to get good performances out of your, your talent, which in this case was Tim and Alfredo and Alexis and Naomi. And to their credit, they did the best they could, but I didn't give them a lot of time to actually sit and memorize the material. So that, that kind of added some added layers of frustration we almost let the building on fire that was a little bit yes. chaotic for a second we had Sean, old light. Sean Finnegan. uh that was not sean's fault Sean that's, Finnegan. A, that's something that you learn the hard way only once is that if a light's been sitting there for a while you need to make sure you change the bulb out because it probably has dirt on it and if it has dust on it it's gonna it's gonna spark and light on fire that's crazy um yeah there's a lot there's a lot of weird things Do you, you have just, to worry about that light ever doing that no because we turn that line on a lot so it's and it's pretty much enclosed so you don't have to worry too much about okay. it but the if the bulb sits there and it's an open faced lamp yeah because there's just bulbs that are exposed with little screens in front of them it will accumulate dust and That's after crazy. a while when you turn it on you'll, you're like what's that smell and normally it burns off like you'll smell an old light you're like oh that's fine but you have to watch it and in this instance we looked up and i was like that light looks weird. It's flickering. Oh, that's because there's fire in the lamp. And we, uh, our, our gaffer, Tej, had to go up there with a fire extinguisher and yeah. blow it out. And I was like, oh, we're all going to get fired because we used the fire extinguisher and no one ever noticed. Um, <laughs> now they go back. To, something's going to happen now at IG and they're going to do it. It'll be like, the, it'll shoot out confetti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no! Like, how did I even do that? Um, so that was one of the, the instances where I was like, I am, I, you know, the, after that, I was like, I'm really tired. But I had to come in the next day and start on Monday and start doing posts for it. Well, that's the thing about with these shoots is like, not only is the production the most intense thing thing you ever freaking do and you're just like like e3 week is similar in yeah, a lot yeah. Of ways where you're just like go 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 there's no stopping and you party then you go back and you just keep going and going going right going. with shoots it's like the production is the hardest thing you'll yeah. ever have to do but in addition to that you also didn't sleep the 48 hours before because yep. you're planning right and you don't sleep the 48 hours after because you're planning the edit and you're like right getting that all started and it's like it's like a week of a couple hours of sleep not even at night, just randomly. Yeah. At different and this, points. I mean, and this is a small internet shoot. Can you imagine if you're on a film that shoots for six weeks straight? Oh my God. And you're basically like, if you're the director of a film or a TV show, or a film, I'm, most, I'm more familiar with the film workflow, not so much for a TV, but if you're a director of a film, you have to shoot for 12 hours, which if the days go like they usually go, means you're going to go a few hours over. Then you have to come back and watch the previous day's dailies. So you get them back from the lab if you shot film. If not, you get them back from, you know, you have them there and they're probably, you do a little letter or color treatment on them. And you have to sit there and watch the dailies to make sure you got everything before you move on to the next setup. And so your day is literally, I was listening to a great interview with the guys that shoot Game of Thrones. And they they would have to, like, watch the dailies as they're on planes to the next location um, and coordinate with the other directors. And their days were, like, 20 hours long. And you're talking about a 20-hour day where you're, like, sleep when you can, get back up, and go. Um, And they always say it's hilarious because I've read an interesting book about this where the director was like, the first three days of production, everyone loves you. Then the middle, like the next twenty to twenty-five days, everyone hates you. And then right around the time the film's about, you're doing the credits for the film. Everyone loves you again because they call up and they're like, "Hey, can I get a different credit? Can I get this like, you know, can I get a promotion on the credit and stuff?" Um, and it's pretty true. But I did another shoot 
um, for a friend that was a little too ambitious. And um, it was right after I had done a couple freelance projects. So I was doing extra work on top of IGN. Um, and the next day after that shoot, because it went really long, I think it went like four or five hours over. And the next day, my wife's like, my wife hadn't seen me for like two weeks, and she was like, "We need to spend some time together. I'm yeah. feeling disconnected from you, and it's not good for our relationship." And I was like, "I'm really tired. You really need to let me sleep. <laughs> Let's I can't see you straight." And she's like, "I need you to come out with me. Let's just. We need to just go. I need to go shopping. I need to do something with you in the sun." And I was like, "Okay." And I got halfway through walking around the mall, the outdoor mall in Palo Alto, with her, and I just had to sit down. And literally, by had to sit down, I mean like my legs started giving out on me. I remember, and this. I just kind of collapsed and sat there for a second. I was like, "I need you to go get me." like an apple juice or something that'll spike my blood sugar. Like, like, don't not, you mean not orange, no orange juice? juice bullshit. Yeah, or an orange juice. It's something that you can just, I, I just need something yeah, that's, yeah. that's going to get my system going. And I had to sit there for like an hour and just kind of like not debate move. what you were doing with your life. Yeah, and then my wife's like, what's going on? I was like, I just, I'm working myself too hard and this yeah. is this is not good and it's not getting me to where I want to be. Um, so that was, those are two times in my life that were very, very telling for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, I mean, that was literally to the point where I almost cried. Cause I was so tired and so depleted from the night before. And I really, you know, I try, I was ADing the shoot and the, and uh, being an assistant director is the, is one of the hardest things to do on set because you are responsible for the schedule. Mm-hmm. So that the role of the AD is to make sure that the director has his shot list and his coverage plan in place for that day's shoot. And then you have to tell all the crews and the actors and the talent where to be. And you have to run the day. And so if the day starts falling behind, it's on you. So you basically have to be the most hated person on set. Cause you have to yell at people and be like, Hey, you're fucking up get the camera over here now or hey get out of makeup you're ready or why don't you know your lines things like that um man production's hard we chose a hard lifestyle this is not easy we should have well, been eventually accountants. eventually colin and i'll just be on talent camera on camera talent and we won't have to worry about it it'll just be you you and then you'll get new pas and da's and yeah ras I mean, the and RAs. they'll take care of everything so you would think RAs. that shout out to the ras you would think that but the <laughs> problem with us is that we're we'll very never ambitious. let go we want all the money we don't want to let go of anything no it's not even that it's I, that's that. why i won't like i'm like no nah, fuck it it's we don't need you, anything. You look at what we're. You look at what. I'll we're be doing craft now. services too. <laughs> my 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 hope is that what we can do, and I hope with any business that that you know, I think we're all in alignment and how we want to run this business is that we don't want to operate on a more is more mentality, right? Sure. Definitely right not. now, we have a very good, steady amount of content that we could double if we wanted to. We could put out five videos a day, but I don't think that's the best thing for the audience. And so, as we if we eventually get to the place where we can add new people to our team. I just hope that we can sort of keep the same status quo but elevate the content to a higher level of quality that will then grow the audience that way versus creating more content because we can. No, the more content thing doesn't work and it's not interesting and and it overwhelms the user and and I think when we're we're getting messages on Twitter and Facebook saying like you guys are already doing too much and I can't keep up with it and I'm like that's funny to me because I like I don't feel like we're doing that much at all. I, I what I, I was I tell Tim this all the time cuz we sit next to each other at the kitchen table all the time is that like I look at our videos on kind of funny, or especially kind of funny games, and I'm like, it's so cool that in that 16 or 20 block kind of view you get when you click on videos on YouTube or whatever, it's just like everything from like the last three weeks. I'm right. like, this is awesome, you know, like because it's good content. It's not just fucking whatever, you know, like, and that's what I like about it. So even in. if people are feeling overwhelmed, I appreciate that, and that's great, and that's fine. But at least they're being overwhelmed by content that we really believe in. As if you to feel us, overwhelmed like, too, turning. remember that we redesigned kindoffunny.com. Where it's everything in one place. Usually, when I feel the people are talking about being overwhelmed, they're for, to, for, when I, they're talking to me specifically. It's about the fact that it's a headache to keep up with when stuff posts on kind of funny, when it posts on kind of funny games, and yeah, when there's stuff on Twitch, and what like you gotta look on our Twitters to see if there's new. In the, we didn't think that one through very well, but the but we, we got we got that to the point where it's the best we could do. I mean, like yeah. it was like that's it, just it the goes way back it is. To, with we could have just work. we could have just left everything on kind of funny, but then yeah, there would be seven videos a day or whatever, and then yeah. it's like, oh, oh no no, no yeah, yeah, yeah yeah I just think that we. No, I think that the, the the way the content goes out is well planned and thoughtful. Yeah. We didn't we did not think through at all how we were going to tell people. Oh sure sure oh. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, it's, it's that's hard. It's, that's, it's a that, lot of different places to get. A yeah, lot I don't of think we thought that went through. I mean, like, I, and I think that it's just because of the kind of the rapid fire nature of mm-hmm. the the content is really what's most important. But the end game of getting the content out there is important too. And I just think we were so caught up in the the embryonic stages of kind of funny that we were not worried about the end the end goal of the baby coming out of the womb as it were you know like it's yeah. like we were just like well the baby's in the fu- like gestating we, were, it's we fine. wanted to conceive the baby yeah. first yeah, yeah exactly. we had the room ready and stuff but just like we had no plan for yeah, but the we baby didn't, yeah, existing we, so we yeah. thought the, the, the products themselves are great like Gamescast and, and, and this show I think are really good and it's just yeah the end the end result needs to be cleaned up more and I think that the new kind of funny.com I agree is like a very thoughtful way to 
see the entire product, including what we're doing on Twitch, which I think is really cool. I don't know how yeah. the hell you guys did that, but um, it's fucking wizard. It took, it took, it took some digging. Into the, well, the, the glorious thing now is there's this thing called Google, and everyone always makes fun of it, but I just type questions into it, and it gives me answers. It's great. it's awesome. It's what so I love good. about I was talk, I was talking to Greg about this too. Is my favorite thing about Google is that right now is that it used to be like uh, look up the definition of this word, and it'll be like it would bring you to dictionary.com mm-hmm. or something. Now it just tells you the yeah. answer. They're just like cutting everyone out. It's just oh, like yeah. oh, you don't need that. Like yeah. you don't need, here's websites if you want it, but here's the actual answer. Yeah. Like he's like, when is Valentine's Day? And it's just like February 14th. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I love that. I, yeah. I like, love that. Like, and it's just probably murdered all these sites. Oh, dude, it's my favorite thing. Is I'll, I'll, I, a lot of the times, like you guys. When know, is Valentine's Day? dot com is fucked. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, a lot of the times, like you, you know, to be a man, you have to know your own shortcomings, right? And one of my shortcomings is definitely spelling. I mm. cannot spell. I cannot see spelling errors, right? Not only that, but I, I don't know if I'm using the word, the correct word for the correct context. So oftentimes I will type said word and then define in. And that is something I noticed that it's so fast because it just has a little white box mm. in that plain, non, not really well dis- designed because it was put out there by an engineer, not an artist like Apple. That plain text, which is like, this is the definition of the word. And you're like, nope, okay, I was using that wrong. So, <laughs> so I'll go back good, to the drawing board. Yeah, they, find it it's crazy up. how Google saves you with just that fundamental difference. A click, a, a search, which could save you 10 clicks a day, which can save you hours at the end of the a week. A day. Yeah, like a, like a day of your of your year, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of, of, it's kind of interesting. Um, to your question, Greg, the C++, uh, it's funny because the, the, the most recent time I remember being truly sleep deprived was when we were in Vegas. And we went to Toronto to see Frank. Oh, and God, like yeah. I was fucking wrecked. You know, you couldn't like, sleep on the plane. Right? I can't sleep on plane. Yeah. So like, yeah. and this was the funny. This was the fucking stroke of genius, though. Was was we we flew. We we had our whole day in Las Vegas. PlayStation the last day of PSX, yeah. and we did podcast beyond, and we met all these people. Then we went to dinner with Drinkbox, the guys who do guacamole and, and severed and all that, and then. We got on a plane, and this by this point it was like eleven o'clock at night. So we already yeah, been we took a red for like eye. fourteen hours. Then we flew from Vegas to Toronto. We landed at six or seven in the morning. Their Timex Social Club was on the fucking. I was delirious. Timex Social Club is an obscure new wave group from the eighties out of Berkeley. Their songs playing. We're, we're waiting, waiting for, for like the tram. The tram. I'm like fucking delirious. I'm like, what is this song? We get to this hotel. We sleep for literally two hours. We had hotel rooms for two hours. Yeah. We get back in. There's a car waiting for us. We drive. We have a great time with Frank. We get back. Now, the great thing about this was at this point, we were up forever. We were with Brian Altano, who had a normal night's sleep and all this kind of stuff, too. So I don't think he was not in the same boat. Yeah. yeah Sean yeah. was with us, too. Sean, yeah, they got in a normal night. And so they were like not in this, like, I, we, like, we were so tired by that point that by the time we got back to the airport to come home in Toronto, I was like fine again. But we got on an Air Canada flight that was empty. Oh, right. And it's so rare to have that anywhere. Oh, yeah. Especially at a huge hub like that. And so, like, my whole row is empty. It's like a five and a half or six hour flight from Toronto to San Francisco. And I just zonked the fuck out. And I was so tired. I was afraid. I'm like, I got to stay up. I got to stay up so I don't fuck up my sleep schedule. But I was so tired that we got home at, like, 11 o'clock that night. And I just went back to bed. And I was totally fine. I was totally well adjusted again. Mm. But when I was younger, in high school, there was a couple years of weird years. Uh, My hockey team used to practice in the mornings uh, on certain days. And so I would stay up. I, like when I lived in New England for a while and played hockey up there, we would practice after school. But we would practice before, like like five or six in the morning on mm-hmm. like random days, like Sundays and shit like that. So I would stay up all night Jeez. and then and then play hockey and then come home and go to bed. And if I had school, I would basically stay up, do everything, go to school, and then sleep after school and then wake up at like nine or ten at night. And then like like wow. so, like school was the end of my day. Oh, Jesus, it was like a totally weird, warped way. That's really like that's weird. like how a fifteen or sixteen year old kid lives his life. Happened. Yeah. I, I had my computer and my video You're games, and I was, set, just, I was fucking. I that's was like, I am now. I was like, this is great. Uh, Don't have to talk to anybody. I did that. I did yeah. that right out of college too. I right out of college, I got a job shooting wedding videos, and so they didn't give a shit when you edited. It was all done from home. I had a little home office set up, and slowly but surely. My schedule because I would get oh god I was like it was impossible to motivate to edit back in the day I was like I don't know what I'm doing it's it's not thrilling material either because it's an hour and a half long piece when you're done with it and it's someone's wedding and you're just like uh so my schedule went from you know because during Monday to Friday you edit and because no one gets married those during those days and Friday night Saturday night, and Sunday or Sunday you'd shoot some combination of either one or two weddings and my schedule went from waking up starting around two to waking up messing around starting around four and then six and then i would start editing around eight and then i would edit 
all the way until the time when my when my one of my roommates who had to get up early for work would get up mm-hmm. and I'd hear him go into the bathroom and I knew it was time to go to bed and it was the weirdest schedule because I was opposite I started I would go to bed at like eight in the morning and sleep till three or four in the afternoon and you just don't even feel like you're a part of society at that yeah. point no but there's something about that I think like, shit I gotta wake up because the bank's gonna thing. close in an hour yeah <laughs> that's like a thing I don't know anybody that does video stuff that hasn't experienced that where it's like there's something about editing at night or even writing at night like being creative in that way at night that it just is unlike any other time well there's a lot less distractions yeah, for one especially if you have roommates so when I was editing I had two roommates and they would be around at 5 o'clock you know they'd come home at like 5 o'clock 6 o'clock and they would just be screwing around watching TV playing whatever so eventually they would cool down around 10 or 11 that's when I would sit down and start editing and then you just kind of get into the groove and forget what time is and is. Yeah. they're just gone what is time there. yeah I used what to write time? I mean when I used to write facts on game facts and then my guides for IGN with freelancer I wrote I wrote by the time I was 20 21 22 it changed a little bit because I had like real jobs and like I was working in historical society and stuff but my game facts especially because of my fucked up sleep schedule when I was in high school I wrote everything from like 10 at night to 5 in the morning you know like God. basically like if you read any of that work on game facts from back in the day when I was a kid when I was 14, 15, 16 years old <laughs> there's all these I was, references to the moon <laughs> I was like I was basically that was all written in the middle of the night the I remember days. clearly because I remember that I used to have a thing where like it's 5am I have to go to bed now you know like it was just I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me at that point. It was yeah. just weird. It, happens, it was just a weird. It was just weird. Like because yeah. even when I would go out with my friends in high school and college and like, you know, party or whatever, and then I get home and it'll be like two in the morning. I'd be like, well, I'm just gonna hang out now. I watch like Cheaters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Joey Greco. Eat like you know. I used to just take peanut butter and jelly into my bedroom with saltines and just oh, fucking spread yeah. them on the saltines. Just that's, eat them and watch Joey Greco on fucking jam. Cheaters, <laughs> getting stabbed and thrown <laughs> in the water. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. For me, it was always like. It was always just a, a sort of some level of procrastination that pushed the time later and later and later yeah. into the night. And I hate it. I mean, I just, for the longest time, especially after college, I was like, I just do not want to work. I just wanted someone to come around sure. and, and recognize the talent and just pay me to be me. And I had to wait exactly. 15 we found years you. later. We found you. Well, so that's crazy. So for me, there's a, I'm, sleep is very important to me. Like, I think I like sleep. Everyone loves sleep, but like, I really enjoy sleep. Probably, it's, I think it's unhealthy how much I enjoy it and how much I want. Yeah, it's like healthy is probably what seven hours, maybe eight, eight hours, hours, whatever. Yeah. Like, if it was up to me, I would sleep thirteen hours a day. Like, if I had that time, that'd be like awesome. Portilla. Um, I can't he sleep on way flights. more than that. So, like traveling, if I have to travel across the country, like to New York, that always messes up my schedule, and I always feel sleep deprived, and that's all bad. Um, there's been a couple video game scenarios. Like, I remember waiting in line. Waiting in line always causes problems. Sleeping. I had to stay up all night to get the Wii, and like that fucked my day up. The next day and all that shit came home played some <laughs> god tennis, damn it we done. fucking my day up it does that um but really for me it's more about there's three distinct things there's production like nick was talking about and i remember being in college and having to well of course there's always school sure yeah, we're, yeah we're all long gone and out of studying that. yeah and having to freaking write essays and stuff and i'll never forget like writing these things and being like oh, i just want to write this video instead i don't want to do this i want to write this video and then i'd finish the essay and then start writing a video just because it's like it's what i want to do yeah and it's just like i love that now that's what's keeping us up so we yeah. did yeah we did, we did something right where yeah, it's yeah. like i still have those nights where i don't sleep just because i'm like oh, i want to do this and i start listing lists because that's all i ever fucking do with my life and like i'll stay up all night doing that and i'm like that's great so i get sleep deprived sleep deprived for things i like um but video games are another big one. I'm going to lump video games in with friendships and sleepovers. Oh, because yeah. Because Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, like Halo, all these games, you just start playing with your friends, and then it just turns into a, let's just stay up all night. Yep. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. And it never is. No. Never Terrible. is that worth it. But it's just like, oh, whatever. We'll just, it's already two. We might as well stay. Can we see the sunrise? We don't give a fuck about the sunrise. Why do we say that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, we always do that, and you push yourself, and you make fun of the first person that falls asleep. Junior high becomes, sleepovers are all that. Yeah, yeah. We should do a topic just on sleepovers. Yeah. Maybe next week. That'll be fun. That's fun. I did, yeah, I was gonna say there is there was a time in my life right after college, like right when I had I literally had nothing to do because I didn't could edit whenever I wanted to, where my buddies and I would stay up till six seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I mean We'd there was a, there was a summer where Alfredo stayed over at my house every single day, and man, our schedule was so fucked up. But we would just stay up for no reason every night. Yeah. It was yeah. just fun. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest cause of sleep, de- sleep de- I can't even fucking say this. I have problems with this. Okay. Sleep deprivation. 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 Deprived. Fuck my life. Is women. Mm. Like, th- when you're I should in be that, so lucky. There's two different, two different <laughs> scenarios where this is a problem. Okay. Um, one is when you're first talking to somebody and it's that the initial chase and you're doing the text back and forth. Mm-hmm. Or the AIM messages, to, or the freaking <laughs> telegraph pigeons, or whatever the hell you had to do back then. 
Um, <laughs> wow. But it's 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 staying Carrier up all night pigeons. and constantly <laughs> like I, it's for me. Pigeons. I remember for me it was like uh, like MySpace messages sure. and stuff like that or AIM specifically AIM, AIM yeah, yeah. which is you stay up all night. You're not even saying anything. It's just fucking. How are you? Just trying I'm to good. figure out what how you? you can send but a dick like, pic through AIM. Yeah, exactly. But it's like you stay up all night and it's not worth it. But and it makes you, you feel so good. And you get to that point where it's like, oh, you want to hang out? Yeah, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. We but can rent a movie. All night. But it's something that it just it feels nastier when just it's at night. It. It's just like, it's just <laughs> I know good. what we want to do. What do we inside each other? That's one of them. But the other thing is when you're, you're with a girl mm-hmm. and, you know, you start fooling around. Fooling around, I think, is the best way to put it. Because okay. fooling around is never a quick thing. No, fooling around is gonna last all night, and yeah. it's gonna mean your your day the next day is gonna suck. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's like there's that moment that goes through your head where you're like, "Man, I have work tomorrow. I got a lot of work tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Like I need to be on point tomorrow." But, <sighs> but I really want to do this, you know. And then that's that's that moment where you're like, "Tomorrow's gonna suck. I'm gonna want to oh, sleep yeah. so bad. I'm not gonna get it." So so like there's the present third you. Present you is like I don't care, and future you is like I'm gonna be so pissed at present you right oh, now. Yeah, I'm gonna but be so like, pissed at you. Present me knows that, but doesn't give a shit. Present me, I got, always I got makes an, that choice. I told you the story. I got in a car accident because of that one time. No, I didn't hear that. So my, I, I was visiting my parents' house when I was in college. Uh, my dad was like, "Hey, you, you probably need new brakes. Come over. Let's check your brakes out." Because I was like, "They're squeaking." He's like, "I'll do your brakes for you." Which I love my dad. He's a very handy man. He knows a lot about brakes and, and being a mechanic in general. <laughs> dad loves brakes. But knows he a lot of them. did he a not. For brakes. He does not know. Well, my dad's like one of those guys. Who's like, why would I pay someone else to do this? I can I can do it yeah, myself. Yeah. I've been doing this for years. But I had a Jetta at the time, and it was like a souped up like VR6 version of the Jetta. So the brakes mm-hmm. were like way different. My dad's like, uh, and he just kind of stared at him for a while, and he's like, well, maybe let's just do this tomorrow if we have to go to work. And it was Saturday night. Meanwhile, my friends were like, hey, we're hanging out at my, my place. My The parents were out of town because we were all at, in college at this point, so no one gave a shit who was going, coming or going. And my buddy's little sister was there. And we'd always had it's sort always of... always the buddy's little sister. Yeah, and she was... I think she was a, th- a freshman or sophomore in college at that point. And we, you know, we'd known each other for a really long time because we went to high school together too, but it was just that one night when I was like, hey. And she was like, hey. And we spent the whole night kind of fooling around. Yeah. Um, and when I said the whole night, I mean like, oh, the sun's coming up. And I had work the next day, but I had to finish my break. So I go home. My yeah. dad used to be meticulous about this. He would go, he would just wake me up at like nine. And he'd be like, we got to do this because you got, it's going to take us a couple hours and you got to be to work. And I'm falling asleep while I'm watching, like, like looking, try, I'm sitting on a, like a, a bucket and I'm falling asleep watching my dad do these breaks. And eventually he was like, I can't figure out how to do these. We're going to have to put it back to where they were before. And like, well, we'll, we'll you have to come back because borrow my car and go. So I took my dad's forerunner and I was on the 91 freeway. And I was just like, it's just so warm right now. Oh, no. It's just so warm. And there's like a little dull drone on the radio. And no. I was like, oh, this is so good. And I opened my eyes and I was approximately three feet away from the car in front of me going about 40 miles an hour and just plowed into him and like I braked luckily I braked like I braked enough to slow the pace to not hurt anyone but I hit that car probably going 20 miles an hour they hit the car in front of them who hit the car in front of them uh, and of course it's all my fault and so my insurance and I totaled my like pretty much totaled my parents oh forerunner my God. and I was just like that was not worth it but then six months later after like I, the, the catholic guilt for my mother was gone for having totaled her car it was totally worth it yeah because yeah. yeah, no one because no one got hurt and it was okay but and and his sister little you sister was super cute than that, it was <laughs> there's was a so th- th- third scenario in a relationship or a gr- with girls when it just things go wrong oh god and you yeah. argue all night oh, or you god. get in the I fight mean, or you're, let's not even talk okay about we won't talk that. about this but that is so upsetting that's I the worst i hate that yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, when that, it's just when, like, you're, when you're sleep deprived the next day because of the fucking arguments yeah. or whatever. It's like you're, you're like, on the phone and you haven't said anything for like ten minutes, and yeah. it's just like, all, all right, then. I mean, you know, you're not gonna hang up now. Oh no, you're not hanging up. It's like, all right, I'm not hanging up. Do you have anything else to say? It doesn't matter if I have anything else to say. You should I, know what I want. You say. just, you just, yeah. Oh, no. You should, you know what I'm gonna say here. You know, you <sighs> should know. Well, we should have a whole topic about breakups <laughs> at one point. I feel like we have to have done that before. I don't know I don't if we know. have or not. Really? But wow. I, I I broke up with a girl one time uh, while I was. <laughs> we should do this topic one day. Here's See? my. Here's what I'm gonna say. Right, I'll, sa- I'll it. save it. We should do a topic for it. I'm gonna add it to the list because okay. I've been there's. We've been doing it. Um, one, the, the, you, you, Nick had a really serious one as far as being sleep deprived. Yeah. Mine. Mine was just gonna be uh, when when Soldier Field was being renovated. Chicago Bears played in mm. Champaign, Illinois, which is Champagne. you know the Champagne University at Illinois Stadium, and that you know where Chicago was six. Hours away from Columbia, Missouri, Champaign. That was only four hours away. So me and Noonan, uh, a friend who was at Illinois State, he would drive. Uh, shout out to Pat Noonan. He would. Dr- we bought like 
four sets of tickets or whatever so we could see the Green Bay game and a couple other games. And I went back there, and the Green Bay game was a Monday night game, which meant it ended, and then it was already super fucking late, let alone to drive back four hours in the middle in the dark on I-70 and all these other things. But I did it, and I remember, yeah, getting close to nodding off and stopping at a Denny's and getting, like, steak and eggs and drinking a coffee or whatever. And then getting home, and literally it's one of those things, I pulled up into the house in college, I slammed the door, I'm like, oh, thank fucking God. I'm finally home, I can finally go to bed. And I got up to the door and touched the knob, and I'm like, I locked my keys in the car. Mm. So then I had to call. I had to call around. I had called the cops and like, hey, can, can you come do the thing? And they're like, we can't do that anymore. That's not what we do. And I'm like, oh. And I'm like, well, the officers still carry them. And they're like, well, sometimes or whatever. I'm like, okay. So then I hung up and went. I my roommate had left the back door open. I went there, but I didn't want to leave my keys in the car overnight. I went in there, called from the house phone, and le- said that somebody's trying to break into a car out front. <laughs> and they're like, are you sure he didn't just lock his keys out? I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. So then I was out there with a coat hanger, just fucking around it until the cop pulled up. And then I'm like, oh hey, sorry, I locked myself. Like, yeah. That's he's like, awesome. oh, he's like, let me see if I have a blackjack, and he didn't. So then I still had to call an all night tow company. And oh. I was like, for motherfucker. I like it. That was pretty scheming. Yeah, you like that? That's, yeah. I, I, I'm a schemer that too. Good. I can scheme once in a while when I that need was real to. Good. Yeah. Right. yeah, I think I've told the story before. That reminds me of when I went to the summer sanitarium. Have I ever told you guys the story? I've only been to one, like a handful of concerts in my life. My buddy's like, "Hey, do you want to go see Metallica?" Yeah, and I was like, "Sure, like, I don't yeah. care." And they did a summer sanitarium tour, uh, which was at the Col- the Coliseum down in U- by USC in LA. And I had a load in the next day. My brother used to hire me out to just carry shit because that was pretty much all I was good for in college because I had weight, so I could just like use that weight to carry other weight. Mm-hmm. And my brother had this uh, set that he was loading into San Juan Capistrano down uh, a mission at San Juan Capistrano, and it was this hulking like two story set that he made out of steel. So every piece of it weighed like 300 pounds. And he's like, are you sure you're going to be back in time for this thing? Because you got to drive all the way from L.A. when the thing's done. And where our load-in starts at like 6 a.m. Because we got to go. And I'm like, yeah, no, 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 I'm still going to be back. Drive in. I get there at probably 5.15 in the morning. And just enough time. And he had rented hotels for everyone down there. So people could sleep overnight and start really early in the morning. Just enough time for me to lay down. And people started to get up. And the entire next day was a 14-hour day, like, hour load-in. And he tells the story of how one of his friends looked over at one point, and I was so delirious that I was shadow boxing in the middle of a field. I was just, like, doing katas, yeah, right? Was, yeah, it and was. he was like, And the guy was like, what the fuck is your brother doing? And my, my brother was like, I don't know. Just, he's an idiot. There's oh, some, today, like, when, I, when my alarm went off, I killed it but there was something like that sleep like it was such a deep sleep like my body needed it to come out of that was so weird and then like i nodded back off and then you came over and i heard you shut the door and say something to colin yeah and it's just like man it felt like i had been i had just shut my eyes but then you open up and i had all this energy all of a sudden it was crazy yeah, yeah, you, I can, you were moment. bright freaking right as rain this morning i was, ready. I was, I was surprised ready to go. I, I i had my little things yeah uh, the thing i like wor- about working about you guys obviously there's no you don't have to hide anything we all love each other we're all family all this other shit and whatever and i've gotten <laughs> Yeah, all this other, all this other shit. Colin and I have obviously been around the block long enough with each other that like I, I've I've done the thing where I bite Colin's face off. Like Colin always gets the raw end of my emotional spectrum because like for him especially now now especially you fuckers are on the list too mm. where I don't feel like I have to hide it or whatever if something's mm-hmm. wrong. And, ah, and then I bite Colin off and then he'll, but Colin always like don't fucking talk to me that way. Blah, blah. And then I apologize. So today on the Colin and Greg live <laughs> show, I did something. And I was playing. I was playing with it a bit, where I was pounding the table. Uh, how 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 I click open a window or whatever. And you're like, you're grumpy, blah, blah blah. And I just in my head, I'm like, I must be. If Colin's saying it, I must be. So I just calm down. Let's dial it back a bit. Like Colin helped write me a little bit there with uh-huh. a little nudge. Those are two of my favorite interactions. Like that's that's my favorite interaction to watch in this household. Is when Colin will fire back, but he does it in a very kind, joking manner, but with a stern, fatherly voice. And it kind of snaps Greg back into into line, back into like reality. It's pretty funny to watch. Yeah. We're we're a good oh, couple. Gravity. We're, oh, there you go. Yeah. 